curtain call Guess I want it all Any way at all Thought I missed it by waiting For the game respond For the lost and found For the home alone And for you to come home You to come home I let you in We hate us in With all these simulations Should be fixed by I want it all, any way at all Thought I missed it by waiting for the game respond For the lost and found, for the home alone And for you to come home, you to come home I let you in, it ain't a sin with all this simulation
Yeah, folks, we're back. I know we were off last week. Boys, girls, men, women, children of all ages, welcome back to the Steve Freeman Podcast. It is good to be back with you. Last week, I was in the studio producing an album for the duo that I'm developing, Gilded, from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. They are so freaking awesome. But we were in the studio, and oddly enough, had I not been, I wouldn't have been able to do it anyway because I was so sick in the studio. It was unbelievable. Next day, though, I got on my regimen of antibiotic steroid pack, so we're good to go. But it feels good to be back, and now I'm almost positive that we shouldn't be going anywhere for quite a while. Like, I I think that uh, for the most part, I think Tuesdays are going to be opening up. And I'm going to try to stop planning things for Tuesday so that when we are supposed to be doing the podcast, we actually can do the podcast and not having to be doing something else. You know what I mean? But it's good to be here. In just a minute, I'm going to bring in my buddy, Emmy Award winning actor Jacob Young. We're going to talk tonight about a new film that he's starring in. Uh, Plus, we're going to talk movies. We're going to talk music. And we will be taking your questions and your comments. So all you have to do is type your question or your comment in the chat, and it will pop up to me, and I can relay that to Jacob if you have a question for Jacob. And, uh, of course, Jacob could probably also pull everything up on YouTube and see the chat for himself. Uh, So we could do that as well. Like I said, it's just good to be back with you guys and, and, and trying to get back in some you know, little bit of a routine. I have to say that was a little sad this week. Uh, you know, I heard Saturday about uh, Luke Perry having a, a massive stroke, and then we found out uh, yesterday that he passed away. Um, Got to be honest with you, man. It, as I get older, it, it's like, you know, you start to have this. My wife said it best today. Now it's our generation that's starting to go. And it, it's, you start thinking about your mortality, you know, you really honestly do. And and uh, so condolences to uh, uh, to Luke's friends and family. Uh, I know that that must be uh, must be dif- a difficult pill to to, uh, to swallow. But welcome everybody into the Steve Freeman podcast. So glad that you are here. Don't forget to follow me everywhere on social media at the Steve Freeman. And that's where you can find out everything that's going on, whether I'm in the studio or I'm streaming or I'm writing or I'm working on a movie or I'm investing tons of cash into some business that I've fallen in love with. That's where you'll find all the information at the Steve Freeman across all of social media. I also want to encourage you to sign up. It is down in the description below on YouTube. I want to encourage you to sign up for my weekly newsletter. If you are an entrepreneur, business person, you're an aspiring songwriter, independent artist, sign up for my weekly newsletter called The Revolution. I promise you that the tips and tricks that I give away in there, you're not going to hear anywhere else because I basically tell you the truth and I don't blow sunshine up your ass like everybody else does. So, uh, But yeah, it's The Revolution. It's down below. Click that link and you can sign up for it. It's absolutely free. There's no, you know... Patreon BS or any of that. It's completely 110% free until I get you hooked, and then I'm going to charge you $14.99 a month. No, I'm just joking. Maybe I'm not joking. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a, maybe I ought to be doing Patreon. All these other people are doing Patreon. No, I'm just kidding. It's totally free. Uh, so uh, sign up for it and follow me across social media. So it is now that time. I want to bring in a good friend of mine. He has uh, won Emmys. He has been nominated for a thousand of them. Uh, he's won one, and he's got some amazing new projects coming up. And we're going to bring him in right now, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome my buddy, my friend, actor Jacob Young. Jacob, buddy, what's happening, man? Hey, hey, Steve, how you doing? I'm doing good. Man, I, I am doing. You're so you're you're in you're home in Utah. Yeah, I'm I'm home right now. I've been bouncing around for a few weeks. I was in Los Angeles and. New York for literally 24 hours and back to LA, but it's good to be home in Utah. Well, I want to talk about this new movie that uh, you've got coming up um, it's called Angel. Um, how would you, but we're going to take a look. We are actually going to, I don't know that, I mean, I know you've tweeted it out, but I don't know that if it's ever been shown like this. So, but we're going to play the trailer 
<laughs> I, I, I hope the producers and the directors in the studio, I hope none of them mind, but we're going to play the trailer tonight. Give me a little, give me the, uh, give me the short and stuffy on, so, on Angel. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you know, it's, it's basically, if we're going to present it, it's like a, he's a superhero for the Latino market uh, because there hasn't really been any superheroes that are Latin. Uh, and and so Angel has he doesn't know where he's from. He's an angel. He doesn't have fingerprints. He can heal people. Um, so it's faith driven, but it has a super superhero element to it. Um, it's very artsy. It's like a graphic novel. So it's 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 an interesting film. Yeah, man. It sounds like it sounds really good. I of course have seen the trailer. Um, but I tell you what, let's do before we get into it. Let's go ahead and play the trailer right now so people can uh, can get a feel for it this is the official never before seen trailer for the upcoming film entitled angel are you really who they say you are do you know who you are yeah sometimes it takes a hot second Rocket packs of spandex for you. Just a hoodie and some good old-fashioned prayer. Yes, sir. I have to apologize for my girls. They're all bent on tyranny. Please forgive them. I gotta tell you, I think that is gonna be a great movie. Yeah, you know, thanks. Um, I, you know, I watched an early screening uh, screener of it. Um, you know, because being an actor in the film, we are it's, it's accessible to us, of course, and I think they wanted to know what we shot. Um, but it, you know, it, I was really pleasantly pleasantly surprised, and I think it really has potential not only in the film festival level, but you know, commercially, I think it might have find a, a home someplace. Uh, a lot of times that's the hardest part, as you know, is, is not only developing the project and getting the project shot, but where is it going to go? Who's going to do the distribution? <coughs> no, excuse me. No, that, that's a very good point. I mean, it's a lot of people don't understand how the, the actual movie process works. It, it, it's not always the case where a studio buys a script and just funds the production 100% and they've got distribution already in line. Sometimes these guys go out, they raise 25% of the budget or they have the whole budget. They go out and they pay for it, and the film sits in a can until they can find distribution for it. Yeah, uh, and unfortunately, that is most of the time. It's uh, And sometimes they never get distribution. So a lot of times you'll have a film they paid $2 million for and it never really sees the light of day. But of course, with all the, the platforms that we have now, we have a lot more availability, you know, Netflix, Vudu, Hulu, you know, including the cable channels. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm confident it's going to make, make its way. And I think it's going to do really well in, you know, the Latin market, South America, across the board. It's, uh, I, I think it's really going to appeal because, it's, like I said, it's a faith-based driven movie with like a superhero feel to it, with a, a really cool scoring to it. No, I mean, I agree. I mean, the n number one, it's like you've said, we, we've we not really seen uh, a Latino superhero for sure. And then it's also got kind of a faith-based, you know, spiritual aspect to it that even adds more to it than that. So I think that's, I, I think it's, I think it's going to be a hit, man. I think it's going to be great. I think it's a win-win. I think they really know what they were doing when they were developing this project. And of course, Ricky Garcia, who's in it, is a, who's a Disney star. He's also a musician. This is kind of his was his first uh, film and his first foray at 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 you know being an actor. I mean, outside of the little Disney show that he did, 
the little Disney show, I say. I mean, the kid's got like a million followers on his social media. So right, I'm very right. lucky to, uh, to star with him in this film. And he does a really great job. And, uh, you know, the film is very artsy. There's not a lot of dialogue. Most of the dialogue is, is the other actors. Angel, he doesn't speak a lot. Um, and I think that's a really interesting perspective, you know, for the audience. Because you're, you're constantly going, is he going to talk? What, you know, and what right, is the right. first words going to be? So you're on the edge of your seat waiting for it. I, I'm really proud of this project. I think it's, it's it's definitely got some wings to it. Now, if I'm if I'm counting correctly, this was one of, what, five films you shot last year since leaving Bold and the Beautiful? Yeah. So, yeah, this is this is number four out of the five that I've shot. And, you know, it, it's, I've just been so blessed to stay busy and and break the mold of, of being on daytime television yes I, you know i don't poo poo daytime at all because it has been what's carried me through most of my career but a lot of times they say it's impossible it's not possible for somebody like me to who has been in soap operas for so long to transcend into the next level and so far it's been pretty seamless knock on wood and you know the fans have been enjoying it and the fans that are on that were watching bold and the beautiful of course they don't just watch soaps they watch movies also well, absolutely. And I mean, you know, that's one of the things you and I have talked privately about it. But, you know, publicly, I don't know if anybody's asked you this question and I don't mind asking, but do you do you at all miss being on Bold and the Beautiful or All My Children? Do you do you miss the daily schedule and the grind of, of what daytime brought or or are you are you glad that you moved on and now you're basically just doing feature films and and are you enjoying it more? Are you glad you did what you did? Yeah, well, yeah, first, the first part of the, or the second part of the question, yes, I am glad that I did. I have felt artistically a lot more freedom. Uh, I feel freer inside myself um, because you are so conformed to that same character, to the, the same, you know, group that you're always working with, the same kind of recycled storylines. You know, let's face it, almost every storyline has ever been told in soap operas. It's nothing new that I've ever, you know, experienced other than my storyline on Bold and Beautiful for a very short time. But, um, you know, in general, yes, I'm happy. I feel, I feel a lot of freedom. Do I miss my castmates? Do I miss the people that mm -hmm. I work with? Sure. Because, you know, that's the camaraderie. That's the day-to-day -day friendship that you have. And I miss that. I, I, I'm hungry for that a lot of the times. But, you know, we're, I've got everybody's number. I can always pick up the phone and call them. So um, I'm actually really glad that that's behind me. And I don't intend on... And maybe this is a, a rude awakening for a lot of bold and beautiful fans, but I don't ever intend on going back to that show. Well, I was going to ask you that question. Hey, wiggle that little wire again. Yeah, yeah. Ah, there we go. Is that better? Uh, <laughs> now it's back. I take hold it. That tells now I know what it is. It's a ground. It's a grounding thing. I think. Is it? Yeah. They, now it's gone. Now it's back. Now it's gone. What there it goes. You, what I was gonna, you know. There has been speculation. I mean, on Twitter and everywhere else, there's been some speculation and, and you know, you not definitively saying one way or the other or, or not knowing exactly what you might be willing to do and what you're not willing to do. So, I mean, you just said it. You have no plans to go back. I, I am definitively saying it. I do not want to go back on that show. Not because um, Bold and the Beautiful wasn't a great landing place for me in my career. It's just I'm beyond that now. I've moved past it. And I'm not looking back. It's time to move forward. Uh, this is a, a really exciting part or time in my career. And I feel like if I went back on the show, I'd be taking a step backwards. And I think anybody could understand that. Yeah, man, I, I, I completely understand that. I mean, 110%. Sometimes you just got to move on. You know, and a lot of people yeah. don't understand that. It, it's, it can be hard. It didn't, nobody ever said that it's easy moving on and moving forward and, and, you know, moving into uncharted territory. I mean, you had done films before you know the girl next door and and other stuff like that which oh my god yeah that was just now i lost you i lost all your audio completely yeah i lost you completely there totally gone there we go now, yeah you. then yeah now you're back back but uh you know i i think it's interesting can you talk at all about some of the things that might be coming up and what you're looking at doing this year I, I know you've been staying really busy i know this is explain to us a little bit about pilot season and your your what you're doing now and doing all the auditions and stuff like that yeah so pilot season is a, a few months out of the year and it, it's like lightning fast it's every show that's going to be cast 
uh, and every show that's going to be on every network this next year. Well, not every show, because a lot of them don't ever see the light of day, but they shoot a ton of shows, pilot episodes, and then the network decides which show they want to they want on their their network. Right. Uh, and it's a very, very busy time. It's a very fast process. Um, it's a very stressful time. But this is where, you know, TV is everything anymore. I mean, TV is film. It's all very, it transcends into the same, almost the same genre, as you know. It's just as compelling as watching a film. Right. And and so TV is really where it's at. And especially primetime or any of these original Netflix originals, Amazon, uh, the money is, is amazing. The fan quality, the, the quality of the, the, the projects are amazing. The talent that they hire is amazing. It's, it's a, it's a great process to be a part of. And I've unfortunately, because I've been under contract for so many years, I've missed so many pilot seasons over the years. And I, mm. I mean, I can't go back and say, man, I wish I could have done that. But now I've just got to say, okay, it's time to move on time to pursue this, the next part of that, that career. And um, so that's what pilot season is. Now, do you go and digressing just a bit, but do you ever look back and go, okay, I, I know that in certain aspects being on daytime, being in the soaps w- was maybe holding me back a little bit, but you were getting while the getting was good, number one. But then also it's like, like you just said, do you look back now and see everything that you're being able to kind of take advantage of now because you don't have that schedule to be able to go and, and do these auditions and, and try out for these roles and being offered these roles in in not only feature films, but also television shows and, and network shows, Netflix stuff. Uh, is Do you wish that you had maybe done what you did like five years ago? Sure. I, I definitely feel like I wish I, I would have started a little bit earlier. But again, you know, we never know what the future was, was going to hold. Maybe it was the wrong timing. I feel now uh, it's better late than never. I've got a really great team that I'm working working with, new agents, new management, and they're really, you know, they're really on top of it, and, and they're really good at. I hate to say this, but reinventing the wheel. And somebody like myself, who's been in soap operas for so many years, you know, you, there's a tendency that you get you get tagged as a soap star, and it's right. not a very flattering thing because, especially in Hollywood, they you know they're like, oh well, he's a soap star. No, I'm an actor first, but yeah, I was on a soap for many, many years. So it's really going back out there and meeting these casting directors, meeting these producers for the first time, a lot of times. So a lot of them don't even know me, uh, which is also kind of cool because it's like, I, you know, I, I didn't even exist before this moment. Yeah, they can look my IMDB up. They can find out who I am. But if I haven't been in the, in the circulation of meeting these casting directors, I'm like putting on a brand new pair of shoes for them. So it's and it's it's an exciting time. Yeah, man. It it just it really seems like it, it and you're you're really starting to to capitalize on you know not being tied down to a show like The Bold and the Beautiful anymore, and, and really kind of spreading out doing these films. And I mean, I know we can't we you know we can't really talk publicly right now about some of the stuff you're working on, but I mean, there's some really exciting stuff that that's happening and and. Now that it's almost, you know, it's it's that whole thing. I've talked about it many, many, many times before, but sometimes doors close and we are scared to death to walk through the next door because we're worried it might close before we get all the way through it. And then sometimes we do walk through it and we're scared to death. And, you know, I, this has been an amazing opportunity for you. And I know last year I closed, I made the decision to close, close several doors. And sometimes we just have to make those decisions. We have to go, this is not taking us where we want to go. This is not where we want to be. This, it, it's ultimately having me become somebody that I don't want to be. And, you know, I, I know I've gone through it. I know you're going through it. But what's so funny and what is so cool is that no matter whether the door closes by itself or if you're a spiritual person, if you believe, you know, God closed the door or whatever it is, it's. I find it is true that when one door closes, another door opens, or at least a window starts to crack. And, you know, that's the cool thing is because sometimes you can't move on to really exciting things and to being who you were supposed to be until you get out of that comfort zone and you close those doors and you move on. 
Yeah, and, and that's so so true. I mean, we naturally are, are resisting change because it is what's comfortable. And I, anybody who's out there that has the ambition to be a musician or uh, you know songwriter or an actor, you know, you do. You have to take those opportunities. You have to take those chances. Um, it's scary when you do because you don't you know you don't want to leave what's comfortable. But as soon as that door closes, man, another one does open, and you just got to trust. Well, you know, very, very few people in in business, life, whatever, success was found comfortably. Uh, you know, I mean, people people failed constantly and were made to be uncomfortable. And I, and I, I think for me, I know this is, I'm not going to put it on anybody else. I know this is the 100% truth for me. I succeed the most when I feel the most uncomfortable, when I feel the most threatened, and when I feel like my back is up against the wall. The only other time I feel like I excel more is when somebody tells me no. If you want to watch me do something, tell me no. And, you know, that's... But I think if you're a creative person, if you're a content creator, and especially in, in any way, shape, or form, if you are some sort of a creative, that has to drive you. You have to be driven by the fact of people telling you that you can't do something or you're not good enough because we have this perpetual need to prove people wrong. You know, and and I know for you, that's a that's a, like you you said it yourself. The stigma of being you know a soap star, and and you know, it, and it's but the cool thing is, is you're completely overcoming that. But I think for you, the talent speaks through, because how many other people have done what you've done, and we've never heard from them again. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny you say that because there's so many actors that I've worked with for so many years, like say on All My Children, and they're not they're not doing much right now. Um, right. And, and I don't know if it's because they don't have the right people, right team or or the, the, the drive or they're just being defeated by being called a soap star. Um, and that's what happens a lot with these castings. And, and this is some advice I want to give anybody out there. Also, you know, don't get into the industry if you can't handle rejection, mm. that kind of rejection. Exactly what you were saying. If you can't pick yourself up and, and keep going and let that drive you, then you have no business doing this because it's, that is, you know, 99.9% .9 of this business is rejection. And it's that 1% opportunity that you really try to fight for. Um, so, you know, just, just keep moving, keep moving forward. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. Well, and what I run into a lot, and, and this is what is so shocking is when people come to Nashville or when they go to Los Angeles or New York, one of the entertainment hotbeds, it, it, it always, well, it never surprises me now because I'm, I'm just used to it. But how m the reason I think that is is because most people are now, in, in the day and time of the society that we live in, it's, it's very difficult that people are told the truth. So people are surrounding themselves all of their childhood and adult, you know, early adolescent and early adult life with people that constantly tell them you can be anything you want to be, you can do anything you want to do, and you are so talented and you're great at everything. And we understand that your T-ball team didn't win a single game out of 70 games this season, but we're going to hand out everybody trophies that when these people get into what you and I would call the real world and they show up in Nashville, they cannot believe that everybody doesn't think that they're special or that everybody thinks that they're talented and that they don't get a trophy everywhere they go. And I, I, you know, I don't mean to ever offend anybody, but, but that's always the first thing I, I listen to people when they want me to produce their record or they want me to write with them or they want me to work with them. It's like they, they rattle off 3000 excuses of how awesome they are and examples. And I always come back at the very end and I'm like, then why are you sitting in front of me? You're sitting in front of me because none of that matters, even if it is true. And so I think it's like they hit a brick wall. That's why every waitress and waiter in Los Angeles is an actor or an actress. And every waitress and waiter in Nashville is a singer-songwriter. You know, not saying that they're not talented, but I can throw a rock and hit people that are talented. You know, we don't have any shortage of talented people. And, and so I think that's a big part of the problem is that I think it's this whole society thing that we deal with anyway, which I was kind of interested to watch the Oscars play out. I was wondering, I, I was tempted not to watch this year because I, I, 
I thought that it was going to be extremely political. Mm. I was expecting it to be extremely political. And, and I, I don't want any part of that whatsoever. And yeah. I was shockingly sort of kind of surprised that it wasn't as political as I thought it was going to be. But, you know, I, 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 I want to get your opinion on this as an actor. I, I See, I, I have a hard time. I watch, I watch whether it's, it doesn't matter who it is, but I'll say women because the, the, that seems to be the hot topic of the moment is it, it never fails to, to surprise me that out walks a major star actress that makes 15 to $20 million a movie, gets up there and is introducing the, you know, best female in a, in a lead role. But they use the five minutes before giving out the award to talk about there's not enough women in leading roles. Yeah. Well, there's a fucking category for it, and you're about to give out the award for it. So, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the problem that I have. And I know that goes on out there a lot, and, you and, and I hope you don't mind. I really hope. I didn't ask you if I was going to say. I did not ask you if I could say something about this, but I'm going to. You and I were having a conversation on the phone yesterday. And you had brought up that, you know, because you're doing all of these, you know, uh, these auditions and things like that, that there's not a lot of roles for white guys anymore. And yeah. and it's funny how that you've got the industry and, and all these other parties saying there's not enough Latinos in starring roles. There's not enough women in starting starring roles. There's not enough this in starring roles. And now you're like the white guy going, there's not enough roles for white men. Yeah. Well, this is true. Um, the pendulum swings and when it swings, it swings so far. Um, and, and are now they overcorrecting? I know they're trying to correct, but are they overcorrecting and literally yeah. going off into the ditch the other way? Yeah, I don't think anybody's talking to each other. I think they just go, okay, we all got to do this now. And then suddenly there's, I mean, a Caucasian role is is kind of like far and few. Now, rightfully so, there needed more diversity. And I, I will be the first to say that. But I mean, I also go back and I go, you know, we've had diversity forever from Sanford and Son all the way to like, you know, present day. Um, I just feel like everybody really, you know, they're, they're wanting to put the focus on that. And that's fine. But Truly, it's my, the roles for, for, for me, for my look, an Irish guy like myself, so far and few. And also going back to the Oscars, I mean, first of all, I absolutely despise uh, award shows anymore because... Well, and hold, hold on, uh, pause, yeah. just to pause your... I, yeah. I, I want to make, I wanna make a, a statement right here in case somebody were to just log on and hear that and hear what you just said. Jacob's last major role on television was playing the husband of a black transgendered woman. There is not a racist bone in his body or my body. He is not complaining about the fact that he, an Iri a white Irish guy can't get a role. His last major role on television was playing the husband of a black transgendered woman, which he kissed regularly on television. So nobody take that out of context. We're, yeah. we're talking about the 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 symbolism in Hollywood and, and how it's translating through to, to modern day pop culture. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to get no, that out I, of there. I actually, I appreciate that because I, I don't want anybody misunderstanding that because I, you know, I, I, I am the furthest thing from being racist. Um, you know, be working in the industry for so many years. Uh, you know, I, you know, we've dealt with diversity on every single level and I feel like, you know, it's been something that's been on the, the forefront for so, so many years. But of course, there's you know the spotlight is on it right now, and because of that, the roles for a casting from that my type are far and few. And my agents say it, my management, they're like, it's very ethnic right now, so don't be counting on too much. Well, um, and is it is it diversity if we go the complete 180 degrees in the opposite direction, and now there's going to be a lack of other people? You know what? I guess here's what I, I get, and, and I'm gonna. I'm going to spread this out across everybody. John Leguizamo has an issue with there not being enough Mexicans in leading roles. Uh, uh, Asian actors have an issue with there not being enough uh, leading roles for Asian uh, people. Uh, minorities, you know, African Americans have, the, have an issue with there not being enough. If, if we all start having an issue 
with our specific sexual orientation or skin color or religious beliefs, if we all start thinking that none of us are well represented or we're underrepresented, there can be no diversity. Diversity only exists when it's equal. It's diverse. You know, now we're not able to do that because now you know as well as I do, and I'm going to say it, when there's a role in a script for a white guy, a director and a producer can automatically, that could be a black guy. That could be an Asian guy. That could be, but when a role is written for another minority or a, another gender, nobody thinks, well, that uh, a guy could play her. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. An Asian guy could play her, uh, you, you know, so. Well, it's so true. I just went on an audition the other day for a new series called Stump Town. It takes place in Portland, Oregon. It's a really cool, like, uh, private eye series. And the character that they wanted me to go out for was written as a white guy. And they they went ahead and just did they change the casting. But they had me go on another for another character. But that's so true because you know they you know they, they look at that that character and go, yeah, that can be played by a Mexican, that can be played by an Asian, that can be played by a black guy. Um, but if it's if it's turned around the other way, they don't. They just that just doesn't happen. Let me ask you this. But is the reason for that, do you think that they now think that if they don't think that way, that it is being racist? And if so, how do we change that culture? Man, I, I honestly don't know. That's a good question. I just think it's, you know, you know, the history has shown that there's been ebb and flow on, you know, different kinds of diversity and and things that are happening. And I just, I think everybody just has to, you know, calm down a little bit and realize that everybody's getting their time. Um, I, I look, I look across the ma- the big screen. I look across all the television series, and I see diversity everywhere. I think, I think everybody's just too still on this hitting the nail over the head and beating people's head into it. And I don't think it's necessarily helpful anymore. I think, I think everybody is doing their part, especially the industry. And I think it's just, yeah, I think that it's everybody's just going to have to, you know, accept it and calm down. And then once that happens, it's all going to feel, like you said, diverse, equal across the board. Well, two things. Number one, I think it's the mainstream media this is, that is pushing this more than everyday people, more than people like us, more than, pe- more than people that are, are, are watching and are listening to the podcast tonight. I think we're all pretty much right there in, in the middle, in, in the same. And I think that the media has figured out that, that using these various, whether they're race cards, gender cards, discrimination cards, this is all, it's good for ratings. Because <clears throat> no, number one, nobody's buying their newspapers anymore. And, and more and more people are stopping watching their news programs. But this brings people back in. And I, 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 w- I don't know what net, Netflix subscription and, and Amazon Prime subscription and DirecTV, you know, programming package these other people have that are having all this issue. But, but I don't understand it because I can't turn on my... T- I don't remember the last time I turned on my television and I didn't see a, a, a Latino person, an African-American person, a gay person, a woman, a man, a child. I, I, they're, they're in every show. Uh, most, most TV, to me, looks pretty diverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's even down to the point now where you can start when it's like, okay, when's the gay friend going to come in? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, and, and then it's, you know, oh, and walks this guy and his boyfriend. And it's getting to the point where it's almost getting comical. It's, al- it's almost getting like it's a Saturday Night Live skit. Because it's yeah. like, okay, when is this character going to walk through the door? and Or when are we going to be introduced to this? Same thing me and my wife were talking about. Stacy and I were talking about last night. She's watching this show that she really likes. And they now the new storyline is the mother is, gets cancer. And it's like, that's a, I feel the same way about that as this other stuff. It's like, why does that always happen? We want to escape. You know, if, if these television shows and, and movies and networks, they start doing this, they, they are forgetting the quintessential fact that we're coming to them to escape everyday life. We're, we're coming to them to take us away and give us and entertain us with something. And, and now our television shows are just reflecting 
what's going on in the news media and, and what's going on in, in the healthcare world and people getting sick. And, and it's almost like, man, it's just not entertainment anymore. Yeah, it's, it, they're taking the fantasy factor out of it. Yeah, totally, totally. But, you know, it, it's, I think we're going to see a shift. I think we're going to see a shift pretty soon. I, I know that we, you and I were talking earlier that, especially when it comes to, to Netflix and, and Amazon and, and Hulu, those guys are coming out with some of the most amazing programming and getting totally away from the rules and the regulations of network television and even major motion picture studios with, you know, like in this at the end of this year, I, we were talking about it yesterday, that Martin Scorsese's next film stars Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and Harvey Keitel. <laughs> it's a $200 million budget movie plus. They're already saying they're, they're going over. And it's a, net, it's a Netflix original. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. They've all they've all sort of kind of appeared together, but all of them together in the same movie on Netflix with a two hundred million dollar budget. It's like, how much longer, Jacob? Do you think we're going to be buying tickets to go to a movie theater? I, you know, who goes to the movies anymore? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, other than I don't. Once in a while, going and checking out one one film that you really are dying to see on the big screen, but. You know, when you when you have that, that this kind of accessibility at your fingertips, it, it you know it's you know and plus the movies. Let's talk about that for a second. By the time you you, you leave the movies, you're spending a hundred dollar bill. It's expensive. Easy, now. yeah. That's yeah. that's true. That's right. It it's it's getting to the point where it's it is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, you know, you used to think uh, going out to the movies was. Uh, was was not even something that you had to think about and like now it's like okay it's $62 to get in and then it's you know another $60 at the counter and then it, it, it's I, and half of the movies you go see really aren't that good or have you noticed they're getting shorter and shorter it's like you know you you pay all this money to go to the movie and it's like a 75 minute movie yeah. you know it's like it's an hour and 15 minutes and it's like wow I've yeah, stuck. I mean, I've been stuck in traffic longer than that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. I mean, maybe they're just regimenting the audience, or maybe our audiences are no. just don't have that that patience to sit through a, a movie that long. I mean, I know I was just watching that. Finally, watched the Spider Man animation film. That, yeah, uh, I was going to watch out. that the other night. Well, how how is that? It's actually really really good. I really enjoyed it, but it is a long movie. So is I it? tried to watch it twice completely mesmerized by it love the love the animation love the acting it, it, it it's just it's really quality done but because it was so long both times i tried to watch it i fell asleep Did you? It was, <laughs> <laughs> wow but, the, but and that, if i'm wrong that was the first animated film other than disney to win uh, uh an Rome. academy award right yeah 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 Pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, I need to watch that. I, I saw it on on Vudu the other night, and and I I started to buy it. I need to buy it and watch it. Yeah, you'll dig it, man. I you know being the superhero fan that you are, you'll really like this one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Anything you can talk to us about what you've got coming up, or or uh, even about yeah. the music a little bit? You, you're going to be playing a big festival out in Oregon here. Uh, yeah, uh, which, first which week it, of July. it gets announced tomorrow, actually. So, oh, oops. I mean, I'm you know, I mean, I can talk about it anyway. Um, so. Lucky enough and fortunate, I got asked to open up for Craig Morgan, um, and it's called the LRS Fest. It's in Central Oregon. The headliners are Craig Morgan, Sawyer Brown, Trace Adkins, and Dwight Yoakam. Um, so there's a bunch of a bunch of uh, you know, it's like four day festival, a bunch of yeah. different bands and artists. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to have a bunch of information on it on not only my Instagram, my social medias. But it'll also I'll have links to purchase tickets if somebody's up, up for that. It's it's a camping trip. It's not something that there's no hotels or motels in the near vicinity. So if you come into the festival, plan on plan on hanging out. It's like kind of like a Woodstock for country music, I guess. Well, in, in, in Oregon, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Well, for those of you that don't know, that is actually how Jacob and I met. Is I Jacob contacted me about producing his last EP and. And uh, we just became really good friends, and and uh, we're continuing to work on music together. We've got some, uh, 
We've got some really good plans coming up maybe over the summer and over the fall and some film projects we're going to be working on together. Uh, But in the meantime, you can find Jacob's EP on Apple Music. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Google Play. You can find it basically anywhere that you buy or stream your music. Go check it out. I promise you. I promise you, you'll love it. It's abs- it's it's amazing. I mean, yeah, well, this, I, I have to say that I produced it and wrote half of it. So, yeah. Well, well, I'm contractually this, bound, but it is this, really good. <laughs> well, this festival is directly due to the fact of this the, how great the EP turned out, and and uh, you know the time that you, we spent together and writing this. Uh, this wouldn't even be happening if it wasn't for that our time and the music that we wrote. So, um, so yeah, big thank you to Mr. Steve Freeman. <laughs> and we're going to be doing some more. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward. We're going to be doing. I mean, we could talk generally about it. We can't talk specifically. Yeah, but we're we can't talk on specifically. A film together. Um, that's probably going to be out maybe summer, fall. I think we know it's it's really getting close. And when I say that, you know. It, I say that lightly because, you know, things can happen, but uh, it's not only going to be a cool film, but there's going to be a lot of music that's involved with it. And Steve's going to be directly involved. So keep your eyes open and ears uh, out for, uh, for this, for this project. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, man. I'm really looking forward to it. And we'll be working on some new Jacob Young music as well. We've got some plans for that. Man, I appreciate you joining us for a little bit and taking some time out of your schedule. Go enjoy the family. Tell them I said all hello and yeah. hope they're doing well. Y'all we'll look do, like, man. Thank you. Thank it's hard, you so much it's hard looking at y'all's today. stuff on, on Instagram. They look like the perfect family. Every every post y'all post, you, you look like it's a Nordstrom's ad or something. <laughs> That's because it probably is. It probably is a Nordstrom's <laughs> ad. That's very true. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I will holler at you after a while. Okay. All right, Steve. Take care. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. -bye. Love having Jacob on. Such a talented guy. So uh, just just one of the nicest guys on the face of the planet. And uh, we do. We've got some very, very, very exciting stuff coming up that he and I are going to be working on uh, together. Some films. I cannot wait to tell you about one of them uh, that I'm just. I am really looking forward to. It's, it's, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long, long, long time. Um, and I'm going to get the opportunity to do it. So, well, I want to open it up. I know a lot of you guys, I'm going to try to catch up on chat. Uh, any topics or any questions that you guys want to talk about, uh, feel free. I will open it up and we will talk about it. It's good to see raw and uncut in here. We've got decoy in here. Uh, let's see. Remade gaming's in here. Cajuns live deer cams in. Uh, HB's in here, Michael O, Chandler Jones. Good to have you here, man. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, sending prayers down your way uh, for the Ferguson family. It was so hard to hear uh, a gentleman that, that I had the pleasure of being around uh, passed away from Alzheimer's this week. Uh, Randall Ferguson is was just an amazing man and, and great family, and his family's very, very close to me and, and my family. And So we're passing... Uh, Passing prayers and, and condolences down to you guys uh, on the passing of uh, of Mr. Ferguson, for sure. Hope you guys are doing good. Uh, let's see. Michael O says, Angels added to my must-see list. I agree, man. It's going to be a great movie. Um, I've actually got the whole thing. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to. And I, it, it's going to be good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, la, 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 la. Uh, let's see. With the character of the artist comes from his beliefs and how they live in the public eye. I'm, I'm, I may have missed something there. Uh, let's see. Uh, HB, you're in Central Oregon. Yeah, man, look that up. Jacob will be releasing all the information about uh, the festival tomorrow. You ought to go check him out. He puts on a great show and sings some great songs. I know because I produced them and wrote them. Uh, they're awesome. Uh, Jacob's a great, great songwriter. He's a great artist. And it's very authentic. And I've said this before, but there are a lot of times whenever artists are, they, it's like every actor wants to be a, every actor wants to be a, uh, wants to be a, a singer and, and every singer wants to be an actor. It's, it's not so much that way uh, with Jacob. He is extremely talented in what he does. He, he's uh, 110% authentic. Uh, with it as well. 
Um, and I think you'll you'll love the songs. I think you'll you'll really like them um, a lot. So uh, go check him out. Especially if you get a chance to see him and you're already in Oregon, you got to go. I think you uh, I think you'll really have a good time. So, anybody else have any questions? Anything we need to talk about? Anything we need to cover whatsoever? Um, those of you tuning in, I saw a question. Yes, everything that we're doing on the podcast now is uh, is running through the uh, the Roadcaster Pro. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. I think this is our third podcast in a row uh, using the uh, using the Roadcaster Pro. I, I, I'm loving it. It's absolutely uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I will say one thing. Um, I I'm getting used to the RE27. You know, I used we used to use these. You know, back in the day when I was in radio, and and I and I and I like it. But in my other studio, I, I use an SM7B, and I, I I really like that microphone. I almost I've got another one, and I almost hooked it up in here tonight just because I wanted to see what the difference was, and then probably maybe next week I might do that just to kind of compare the two, and uh, and see which one I like better with the Rodecaster Pro. Um, but uh, this is a great mic. I mean, it still sounds great, and, and everything's really good with it. So uh, I just I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm I'm a man with gear. I'm just that way. It's like I gotta have new new gear all the time. Um, got a new camera coming just because that's the way that I am, and I'm never satisfied with with anything as far as as far as tech stuff is concerned. Um. I will say that I am going to probably start to uh, stream more on on Twitch. Um, I'm trying to get a, a, a more regular uh, schedule going on over there. Some some things that we're about to put into motion um, over there. Um, tomorrow at noon, uh, there will be a new video upload on YouTube. I'm I'm now going to be uploading. I'm trying to get into a, a rhythm for you guys where I upload every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, that is my goal. I'm really going to try my best to stick to it. Um, I know for a fact we have a video going live tomorrow at noon. Um, and it is about YouTube for independent artists because so many independent artists have no idea what they're doing on YouTube. They're doing it completely wrong. And they're really not maximizing the potential and the reach that they could get to really help you grow and, and build an engaged fan base. We're going to talk about that in tomorrow's video. Uh, and I think it's already set up for a premiere, so you can go set yourself a reminder uh, to make sure to watch it when it comes out or later uh, at your convenience when you do have more time. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to get to before we get out of here. Uh, the new camera, I, I'm a Sony guy. I used to be a Canon guy, uh, but I got out of Canon, um, and I've got every camera that Sony makes. So whenever they came out with, the, they announced the, the A6400, I went ahead and pre-ordered one of those, and it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Um, they've been filtering in over the last week to people that pre-ordered, and I got the notice mine's coming in tomorrow. It, it, it interested me because it's the first Sony DSLR with the flip-up screen. Finally, Sony puts a, a flip-up screen uh, on one of their DSLRs, but it's crop sensor. I've got the A6500 as well, so it's crop sensor, and I've got a ton of lenses, and I actually use the A6500 as my... Uh, my webcam on Twitch when I stream on Twitch. Uh, the camera we're using right now is the uh, Sony a7 III. Um, love that. I absolutely love that camera. I'm waiting on them to announce the a7000 and also the new a7s Mark III, which I think is going to be uh, is going to be a phenomenal camera. I, I'm hoping that it's 8K. There are rumors that it might be 8K. And if it's 8K, it, it's, it's going to be a, a absolutely workhorse uh, of a camera. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, to hopefully it being 8K. But if not, I'll buy it anyway because it's, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Um, I am working on uh, getting some, some guests that are going to be coming here in the studio. Um, after the holidays, trying to get everybody scheduled, it being the first quarter of the year, 
Um, it's just real tough to nail everybody down. But now that we're kind of getting past that, I've confirmed some things that we're going to be uh, setting up. A couple of them, and I hate to do this, but I, I don't have a choice to do it. But some of the things that we're going to be doing are going to be pre-recorded during the podcast. So probably what I'll do is I'll come on, we'll start the podcast, we'll roll, and then I'll play the segment just simply because uh, the people that uh, that I'm going to be bringing in are not going to be available to be here at you know 6 p.m. Central. I mean, they live in you know, Los Angeles or... or uh, New York and, and other places, Pittsburgh, uh, other places around the world. Uh, so we're gonna we're going to uh, film some of that stuff whenever I'm in Los Angeles, uh, and then we'll bring it back and we'll have it uh, on the podcast. Uh, but it'll be in pre-recorded form. So I hope that doesn't piss anybody off. If it pisses anybody off? I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, but we've got some really cool stuff and some really cool people that are going to be coming on the show. Uh, planned for uh, the next few weeks um, as well. Look, look, social media. That'll be your outlet to know what's going to be happening at the Steve Freeman everywhere on social media. Let me run through the chat one more time, make sure there is nothing else that I need to get to. Uh, let's see. Sony has a great, has a good low light sensor. Yeah, Sony's awesome. I, I, I absolutely love, 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 love Sony stuff. Um, Although I will say when I record and I'm shooting video and stuff, I don't actually record to the camera. I record to uh, an Atomus Ninja Flame 4K um, because, because I like being able to, to record in the ProRes, either ProRes Raw or, or just regular ProRes 422. Um, and it does a great job. But, but the Sony cameras combined with the, the Atomus stuff is just, it is literally, it is literally absolutely amazing. All right, folks, anything else you want me to get to? Anybody else got any more questions? Quickly type them into chat. We, we are having something, di- I'm just going to come right at We're having something different for dinner tonight that we've never had before. Of course, everybody in my family ate an hour ago. So my I can smell mine being warmed up all the way up here, the third level. I can, I can smell it. And... It smells really good. So when I can start smelling the food, it's like, okay, now it's time to wrap up. But I'll sit here as long as you guys want to sit here. You know that. Uh, so if you have a question, anything you want to get off your mind, comments, now's the time or forever hold your peace, or at least until next Tuesday night at 6 Central when we do all of this all over again. Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight for the Steve Freeman Podcast. Don't forget, join the revolution, my weekly newsletter, tips, tricks, advice, opinion. It's stock full of it. It's in the description below on YouTube. Click join it. It's absolutely free. It's not going to cost you a dime. Uh, Follow me everywhere across social media at the Steve Freeman. That way you can stay in touch with me, know what I'm doing. You can engage with me. We can converse. We can become freaking friends, guys. That's what it's all about. If you have not followed my Twitch channel, you can do that. It's twitch.tv forward slash the Steve Freeman. Those of you on YouTube, you know it. It's youtube.com forward slash the Steve Freeman. It's the Steve Freeman everywhere, for goodness sakes. Uh, you're, you're all catching up. You're all getting it. And, and that's awesome. I, I appreciate that. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff on Twitch coming up. So that's why I'm saying if you haven't subscribed or followed the Twitch channel, do so now. And those of you on Twitch, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can actually tie your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account, causing this microcosm explosion called Twitch Prime. And you can subscribe to my Twitch channel for absolutely free. Nothing in life is free anymore, folks. But you can subscribe to my Twitch channel absolutely free with your Amazon Prime. Totally cool. Guys, thank you so much for being with me. As always, as we close out the show, don't forget, keep being creative, keep pressing the boundaries, and there is nothing wrong with being independent. Guys, see you next week.
Cause I want it all 